That's well well, within a given it's not surprised to me at all. I think there's a whole lot of people in Scotland would probably agree with your sentiment about the underdog performing well. But uh, yeah. interesting to hear that you're um, taking uh, an awful lot of the glory for the way they played last night, given that you said you coached a lot of them through the under-17s. You see, I think there's also a whole lot of people in Scotland will be sitting listening to this thinking, hang on a second here, Michael O'Neill started his managerial career in Scotland. You know, yeah. Niall McGinn plays yeah. for Aberdeen, he started at Celtic. I think I think there's a lot of people here going to take the glory too. Oh, I uh, no, like was at the Gannon Swifts and Derry City, by the way. But um, no, we, you know, we're overjoyed by it and you can understand the sentiments there because it's Northern Ireland we go over this thing about the small country and all that stuff but we have good quality players over the years we've always had quality players because we're a small nation one and a half million and we have disadvantages that all our countries don't have then when we do achieve something everybody feels so good about it and it's been 30 years after all What's the atmosphere been like? In Northern Ireland there's um, obviously everybody's feeling good and We've had a lot of problems over the years outside of football and one thing I will say, more than any other politician or any other body, football has brought the communities together in Northern Ireland and no other sport has brought working class communities together the way football has done or no other industry I, and I, I include the politicians in that. Football has been a great common bond between the, the two sides of the community and, and I'm delighted to see this progress that we're making now at last. What's going to happen next? Well, I would expect us to put up a really good performance against Germany. We've already beaten them twice uh, over the over the last 20 years. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we... We're definitely going to qualify. I, I don't even think we have to get a point now to qualify. That's my... I've done my math on it. And <laughs> I'm, I'm sure... Se- we'll seriously, do you, do you rate your chances against Germany? No. But we can lose the match and still qualify. That's the, the way it's structured this time. Or you could lose it and, in style. Oh, well, we can, yes. And I think it'll be a very close game. I was disappointed that Germany didn't win last night because I would rather they had won where they would be just playing out the game and resting players because they would have really already qualified. But they have to probably get a point against us to make sure. But no, we're, we're going to the last 16. There's no doubt about that. And fair play to them. Kenny Shields, the manager of Derry City there, deciding, sounding decidedly low-key about the whole uh, thing last night. It wasn't like that in our house, I'll have to tell you that. Let's get today's sport, though, with Caroline Edison. Yes, more on the uh, Euro 2016 football in a minute. But first, tennis and chasing a record fifth title at Queen's Club. Andy Murray was given a good match in the all-British affair with Kyle Edmund. Until this. Yeah, so that's it. Second serve into the body, Andy Murray is through to the semi-final here in the Sunshine at Queen's Club. Respect for his younger Davis Cup teammate, who took a set off him, but an hour and 50 played. One-way traffic in set number three, 6-1 in the third. Yes, a three-set win, 6-1 in the third, as Andy Castle was saying there. A good workout for the world number two. You know, I know how good he is. Um, you know he uh, is a big, strong guy. Very powerful game, and um, you know when he's when he's on, he's he's very tough to, to play against in practice. And uh, I felt it in the match uh, as well today. So I expected it to be hard. Andy Murray plays Marin Cilic of Croatia in tomorrow's semi-finals. To football, and Rangers have made their fifth summer signing with a 37-year-old former QPR defender Clint Hill joining the Ibrox club on a one-year deal. If he goes straight into the side, his first Premiership game will be at home to Hamilton. Brendan Rodgers, he'll take charge of his first Scottish Premiership fixture at Tynecastle, with Celtic beginning the defence of their title away to Hearts on the opening day of the season. Ryan Christie hopes to make an immediate impression on the new manager and force his way into the team. The midfielder only started two games since joining from Inverness, Caledron and Thistle in September but he hopes to become a regular. Yeah, that's the plan. Um, obviously back in training on Monday and um, just hoping to hit the ground running almost. Um, obviously we've got a lot of big games even before the league starts so um, you know it's important to kind of impress the manager straight away. 
Celtic's Ryan Christie there. He'll hope to feature in the first uh, Glasgow derby between the big two Celtic and Rangers. That's scheduled for Parkhead on September the 10th. Last season's runners-up Aberdeen, they travel to St Johnston on the opening day of the season. Neil Lennon's first league match as Hibs manager is away to last season's championship runners-up Falkirk. Relegated Dunge United begin life in the second tier against Queen of the South. For a full rundown of all next season's fixtures across all the divisions, head to the BBC Sport Scotland website. And at the Euro 2016 football, Italy are through to the knockout stages after a 1-0 win over Sweden. Scotland's Russell Knox at level par after his first round is four shots off the lead at the US Open Golf. America's Andrew Landry is out in front on four under par, one ahead of England's Lee Westwood. Now Japan expects confrontational rugby from Scotland tomorrow. That's the view of one of the Japan coaches, Mark Hammett. Scotland played Japan in the first of their two tests tomorrow in Toyota City. Hammett has analysed Scotland and says he's impressed with Bern Cotter's side. I'm pretty impressed with them, obviously from uh, from the World Cup through the Six Nations and you just see that they're continuing to build and, and build on their game. Quite confrontational and um, and obviously based around around set pieces a lot of uh, a lot of Six Nations rugby is. And let's finally hear from Edinburgh diver Grace Reach. She's been named in Team GB for the Olympics in Rio. So what does she make of her rise over the past year or so? What I've taken away from it is that if I go in confident and just believe in my ability and the training and the work I've put in, that that's definitely enough to stand me in good stead. I mean, it's the biggest show on earth and I'm so excited. Um, you know, there's been such a build up to this that it is a bit of a relief, but already I'm thinking about, okay, well, if I'm going, I want to do well. Like, I'm not just going to make up numbers. So that's the next step, I guess. Congrats to Grace Reed. That's all the sport. And Zoe Diamond has the traffic and travel. Thanks very much. If we start on the motorways in Edinburgh, the M8, it's all clear now westbound after that accident at Hermiston Gate, but still on the M8 in North Lanarkshire, uh, slow traffic at Junction 6, Newhouse, congestion, congestion rather, back to Junction 5 for shots in Hart Hill. In Falkirk, hazardous driving conditions because of a diesel spillage. This is on the M9 northbound at Junction 4. It's affecting the carriageway and the exit slip. Uh, in Glasgow, the M77 is heavy traffic southbound between uh, Junction 22 of the M8, that's Plantation, and Junction 1 for Dumbreck Road. Now, in Edinburgh, the A8 Glasgow Road, slow traffic westbound at Newbridge, congestion back to Ingleston Road. This is because of poor weather conditions and motorists trying to avoid Queensferry Road because of the roadworks there. Uh, queues, I'm told, are back to the airport. The A90 at uh, Angus, the A91 lane blocked and heavy traffic because of an accident involving two cars. This is southbound between the A928 and DL Road is affecting traffic towards Dundee. That's BBC Radio Scotland Travel. And you're listening to News Drive tonight with Laura Maxwell. The time. 92 to 95 FM, 810 medium wave and on digital. BBC Radio Scotland. News and sport for the borders with David Knox. Good afternoon. A pensioner has admitted killing another OAP in Tweed Bank. Richard Cassidy appeared in court accused of murdering David Farish in February this year. His guilty plea to a lesser charge was thrown out. Angela Suave reports. 75-year-old David Farish was found dead at his Tweed Bank home in February following an anonymous call to police. He'd been stabbed. And after previous appearances in Selkirk, this morning saw 69-year-old Richard Cassidy appear at the High Court in Glasgow, charged with his murder. He admitted killing Mr Farish, pleading guilty to culpable homicide, but his plea was rejected by the prosecution, and Cassidy will stand trial for murder in the new year. The charge states Cassidy struck Mr Farish on the neck and body with a knife or similar instrument and used an object to the prosecutor unknown. He also faces an allegation of attempting to defeat the ends of justice and two charges of behaving in a threatening and abusive manner. Judge Lady Ray set trial to start on January the 4th in Edinburgh. Borders MPs have been paying tribute to Joe Cox, killed yesterday in Yorkshire. The Labour MP died after being shot and stabbed in the street after a constituency surgery in Bristol. The 52-year-old man is in police custody. She was aged just 41 and regarded as a rising star in her party. SNP MP Callum Kerr, who entered Westminster at the same time as Mrs Cox in 2015, tweeted heartbreaking news about Joe Cox, condolences to her friends, colleagues and above all to her family. Also on social media, Peoplesure Tory MP David Mundell posted, so sad to hear Joe Cox has died doing her job. He added heartfelt sympathies to her family and friends seem inadequate but deeply meant. 
An 81-year-old man who died after being hit by a lorry on a road at La Manca yesterday hasn't yet been named. The accident happened on the A701 into the Peebleshire village from the Leadburn site at around quarter past 12. The pensioner died at the scene. The A701 was closed for investigation work for almost seven hours. A woman was taken to Borders General Hospital after a crash on the A7 north of Stow this morning. A Peugeot and a Boxer van collided five miles from the village just before 9am. Firefighters gave the woman first aid at the scene. Debris on the road was later cleared. Well, it's been a day of up with the suitors as Selkirk celebrates its historic common riding. Despite grey skies, thousands turned out to support standard bearer Rory Monks as he led the town in its annual customs and traditions. Rory admitted it'd be a day to be proud of. The mornings went in a flash but I've had the absolute time of my life. I wish I could do it again. I can't remember half of it but I'm sure it'll come back to me throughout the day. And yeah, I've just had a, such a fantastic day. The attendance have been brilliant. The folk of Selkirk have been absolutely magic and just really proud. Hoyk is a remote centre and won't get a permanent driving examiner, says the Driver and Vehicle Standards Agency. That's despite people waiting longer than the national average for the driving tests. Richard Gordon has more. There's no driving examiner based in Hoyk. They have to come from Galashiels or Curry. Up until the last week of September, there are 12 deployments planned, a total of 60 test slots, and they're all booked up. Anyone who puts in for their test is being told their application's on hold and they'll get a date as soon as possible, although they can apply at other centres. Local MSP John Lamont was this week seeking a meeting with the DVSA. The agency admits the wait in the town is now around 50% longer than the national average of just under eight and a half weeks, which they're looking to reduce by another week by next year. But while over 350 examiners are being taken on last year and this in the UK to meet increasing demand, they're not looking to recruit a permanent examiner for Hoyk, calling it a remote driving test centre. On to sport now, starting with rugby and as we've been hearing, Scotland will play Japan tomorrow. And the starting lineup for the opening test includes Borderer Stuart Hogg at fullback, Damien Hoyland on the wing and skipper Greg Laidlaw at scrum half. The match which kicks off at 11.20am our time will be screened live on BBC2 Scotland. In cricket, Kelso will entertain fellow strugglers Marchmont in the East of Scotland Championship tomorrow. Gala currently lying second in Division 1, welcome third place Clack Man and County to Beagle Park, while St Boswell's host Falkland at the Green in Division 2. The third division sees Selkirk travel to Linlithgow on Sunday. Both border sides are at home in Division 5 tomorrow. Hoyk and Wilton host Edinburgh Ackes. It's a clash of the counties as Peebles meet Stirling. In Division 6, Melrose will travel to Peffer Mill to meet Carrollton, whilst the Gala Hoyk development side are away to Clackman in seconds in Division 8. Aye. In athletics, the Borders game circuit Aye. moves to Philip Hawk Aye. tomorrow Aye. in Selkirk, where the event will get underway at 1.30. And finally, Gala Ferdinand Rovers play host Aye. to Airdrie in a pre-season football friendly at Netherdale. Kick-off tomorrow is at 3pm. Now, let's see what the Bowler's weather has in store for us. Yeah, Here's yeah. Christopher Blanchett. A cloudy, damp evening to come, with today's rain slowly easing away to the south. After dark, most places will be dry, with lows of 9 or 10 Celsius. A far improved day tomorrow, with a ridge of high pressure overhead just settling things down. Perhaps a cloudy start, but soon it brightens up with sunny spells. Highs of 17 degrees and feeling much more pleasant than today. Sunday is largely dry too, but cloudier. There'll be some limited bright spells with winds from the southwest, highs of 17. BBC Radio Scotland weather for the borders. It doesn't sound all that bad. I'll be back with more news from the borders at half past five. <laughs> news Drive on BBC.